Good morning, this is Jason Cheeseman Meyer, and I'm going to be discussing some Photoshop tricks to clean up photographed drawings. Getting the perfect photograph of a drawing requires the right lighting, setting up your camera for the white balance and that sort of stuff, and a lot of time we don't have the equipment or just the time to make that feasible. So I take my sketches and I lay the sketchbook out on the floor next to an open window, not in direct sunlight, but in as strong and even as light as I can get, and snap a couple, three photographs of each one. Import them into the computer, check to see which one is crisper, in this case it's this one, and I bring that into Photoshop. Okay, first thing we do is crop it, and you'll bear with me because the screen recording program inter has some problems when I start using the crop tool. So ordinarily I would rotate this and get it perfect, uh, but because of the delay here we're just going to skip and leave it cockeyed. Image rotation to put it upright. Now I see the, uh, the camera has adjusted to photograph the white of the paper as gray. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate layer, control L for levels, and auto levels. Okay. So. This has brought our paper up much closer to white. This has brought up some new problems. When it was just gray, it looked, you know, okay. But when we bring it back to white, we notice that the color is orange in the top left and purple in the bottom right. Um, if this were a color painting, that would be a big problem. But since this is a black and white drawing, that's easy. Control U to get to hue saturation. Drop the saturation slider far enough that that color difference doesn't bother us anymore. Okay, So now we get to the problem where parts of the page are better lit than others. We've got a hot spot on the figure and it's gotten dark around her. So we're going to start a new layer. We're going to get a radial gradient and a nice bright distinctive color. And we're going to paint that radial gradient in everywhere that the paper is not white. The darker the paper is, the more opaque we want our gradients to be. Okay, now we right click on the layer icon, select pixels. Turn that layer off, go down to the bottom to the circle that's half black, half white. It's just off the screen capture here, sorry guys. Click that to get an adjustment level. So when we change the levels here, that's only going to affect those areas that we had painted red. Use the middle slider first to adjust the, the midpoint, and then we can play with the right slider to get to white. And if things start to the pencil lines start to fade out, we can bring our black slider up to darken that back in. And you see here, I've overdone it a bit. It's blown out. See that? Blown out. Back it off a little. I'll try to get rid of that as best I can. But if I overdo it, that's just fine. All I need to do is go to the opacity of the adjustment level and knock it back until things, that hot spot goes away and things hold together. Okay? So instead of having this dark around the edges, we bring it up much closer to that feeling of the white of the paper and we're getting a photograph of the drawing, not of the paper and of the poor lighting conditions in the room. Alright, I flatten this, shift control S to save because anytime we can use keyboard shortcuts, especially when we're doing things over and over and over, helps. Save it and then I go to image size and I resample it. Uh, what I'm using these days is the largest dimension I'm taking to 1200 pixels because that's, you know, still pretty big. Um, but it's not absurdly large. And so I'll save this. I put the suffix medium or MED for medium on it. And that's the one I will upload onto Facebook or Blogger or whatever. Um, and there we go, and then I open up the next drawing, and actually usually I do all these steps together. I'll open the, my ten favorite drawings from the night before, and crop them all together, and adjust them all together, and then save them all together. 
Um, anytime you're doing a repetitive action in Photoshop like this, it's probably worth your while to uh, create some actions um, and keyboard shortcuts to do those. Uh, but that's kind of another topic, but uh, it's always worth repeating, I think. All right, guys, if you've got any questions or have tips for some different ways that you do it that you think are cool and want to share, shout them out.